Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. I'm trying to make sense of this crazy Arizona market, and I'm going to tell you why I think open houses are going to start getting very popular. One of the reasons is with all of the recent changes with the National Association of Realtors on the ability to post buyer broker compensation on the MLS, it just caused a whole bunch of confusion. Adding to that confusion is some of our local news stations. And here's one here, and this still drives me nuts. And they're great organization here, love it, but do a little homework. Major real estate settlement changes will soon go into effect, and here's how it'll affect Arizona. Starting August 17th, before a buyer's agent could take a buyer to look at a home on the market, there has to be a signed compensation agreement in Arizona. Well, guess what? We did that starting August 1st. It's the rest of the country that did it Saturday, August 17th. Every news article I've read about Arizona with this change has said, here come the changes Saturday, here they come, here they come, and I'm just shaking my head. No wonder buyers and sellers are confused out there. And so now buyers, some of the news that's coming out said that buyers must pay the agent's compensation. Not true. You and the buyer, agent and the buyer, you work out the compensation and you discuss if you're going to pay it or if we're going to have the seller pay it like we have for the past 40 or 50 years built into the price of the home. Not looking to get into that debate whether it should be flat fee or commissions. I'm just saying they're wrong. So what's that doing? Well, buyers are skittish. Like, man, I'm going to wait this out. You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to go to an open house. I'm not going to reach out to a buying agent and offer to sign their document that they tell me has to be signed because of the new law. I'm just not going to do it. And I can show you that new document. I've showed it before. And it's it's you can sign it for a day. You can sign a showing document that simply gives me, the agent, uh, permission to show you homes. You can go over and get Julie to sign you know, get her to have a document for you. You can have three to 10 realtors that you give permission to, to show a home. Now, before real estate agents freak out, when it comes to agency, if you find a home that you want with the agent that you were with, then you sign what's called an agency agreement that says, okay, this, you, Mr. Agent, you're going to walk me through this entire transaction and help me purchase this home with full fiduciary duty, which means the agent represents you and you only. So that is a lot of things that people don't understand. And the buyer reaches an agreement on compensation. So let's say the compensation's 2.5%. Well, a lot of sellers are still offering that compensation. In fact, some new builds out there are offering compensation as high as 4%. So the compensation to buyer's agents is not going away but there's different ways to ask about it and negotiate that fee. Who pays it? I don't blame buyers for not wanting to cough up the money, but what I see happening and what I'm, I think I'm going to see this nationally is rather than understand what's going on. Cause I mean, who does all this research unless you're in the industry, buyers are going to say, well, I'm going directly to the open house. I'm going right there. And if I like the house, I'm going to ask that listing agent to, uh, Help me with the transaction. And the listing agent can either go forward with an unrepresented seller agreement, which means you really don't have any representation. You're on your own or what's called dual agency. And that can get kind of tricky. That's between the agent and their broker, but it can be done. Now, if you're up unrepresented, here's where some of the hiccups can come in. Um, deadlines are up to you to follow. The listing agent's going to try and keep the deadlines going because he does want the home to sell. So they're not going to get in your way. But there are deadlines during the inspection period where you've asked for 10 things to get fixed and <clears throat> they don't reply in time or you don't reply in time. Now you've accepted the house as is and there's nothing you can do about it. If you've asked for 10 things to be fixed and the buyer seller comes back and says, I'm o I only agree to fix two of them. The only negotiation is going to be you pushing that agent and saying, look, I want at least eight of them fixed. And he's just going to say, well, the seller says he's only going to fix two. He's not going to go to the seller and push on your behalf because he has a fiduciary duty 
for the seller. So he's really, he's going to be empathetic that you want eight things fixed, but he's going to be more bound and rigid to make sure that the seller only has to fix two things. That's what I mean by fiduciary duty. Now, if he was ready, representing both of you, that's a whole new ball game. But I think open houses are going to be the new bell of the ball. And it seems like there's more and more open houses now than there ever has been. But because remember, during the COVID years, there were none. And then during the inventory shortage, you just couldn't get an open house because as soon as it went on the market, it went up for sale. Why, why hold an open house? Hey, go ahead, walk around. We already have 10 offers. Waste of time. Not anymore. The only hard part about open houses right now is the time of year. It's election season. You've got to put your open house sign on the same intersection. It's got Bob for mayor and Sally for Congress. So you got to keep your eyes open looking for those things. A lot of neighborhoods have different restrictions for them, but I'm seeing more and more open house signs out there. And if your agent has listed your home and he says, would you like to host any open houses? Say yes. Because open houses... The odds of getting a buyer at an open house were actually about this big. They were pretty slim. It would happen, but it was rare. You could hold an open house for days, and most buyers come in, they're kicking tires. And uh, But I think the intent of buyers coming in now is going to be a little bit more than kicking tires. So why did agents host open houses? Well, to meet buyers. I come in and I go, hey, I'd like to see this house. And I'm looking around. Ah, this is not for me. The agent tells me, well, tell me what you're looking for. Well, I'm looking for this, 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 and this. Well, let me see what I can find for you. Uh, let me get your email address and your phone number, and I'll let you know if that comes up in this neighborhood. So in other words, they build an active list of active and serious buyers. So there may be six people come through that open house that day, two of them, might have intention to work with you as the listing agent or the person hosting the open house to help them find a house somewhere else. So open houses have always been popular that way and they will continue to be popular that way, but I just think we're adding another element. I firmly believe open house traffic is going to increase. Now, how do you find those open houses, buyers? Well, you know, real estate agents don't like to say it, but Zillow is a good resource for that. You know, realtors, they just don't like Zillow because, oh, my goodness, they they took all of our listings away. They uh, Their website is the highest visited website for real estate in the world. So we have to suck it up. Here's Gilbert. I picked up here where it says more, and I just clicked on must have open house. Applied it. Here's all the open houses on the map on here in Gilbert for Sunday. A couple on on there for Saturday. Saturday and Sunday, but there's your list. And a lot of buyers use the Zillow phone app to pull up an area and get a list of open houses and drive right there and, and take a look. So that's how you can find your open houses. So I think this is not a game changer, but I firmly believe that the buyers that are nervous, that don't understand the buyer broker agreement, they don't understand the showing agreement, Rather than figure out how, to all, how it all works, they're just going to go straight to the source. Tell me what you think. And if you have any questions, shoot me an email at rick at rickhelps.com. Take care.